Tell me the tragic story. I was watching you talk and you spoke beautifully about Pete Newborn. Pete Newborn was a academic, a lecturer at Northumberland, I think. Uh, he was Jewish and he got into a spat with somebody else um, about anti-Semitism. Um, and the, I'm just trying to remember the story now. Um, and the mob came for him and tried to make out that Pete was anti-Semitic. One thing led to another, and the university uh, got involved. There was a pile on, I think, something like 5,000 people complained about him. Um, and then this Kafkaesque process of punishment, the process is the punishment, kicked in. Um, several things happened to him at the same time. His father died at the same time, I think. Um, and tragically he killed himself. He, he jumped off a bridge. That's um, terrible. This is one of the things about cancel culture. It's, it's, it's devastating. And the interesting thing about where we are at the current moment, at this, this current moment in time when we're speaking now is that I think cancel culture is taking another very sinister term or turn. Okay. So at the moment, I'll tell you what I mean at the moment. And I know this because I've been on the receiving end of pylons and, and, and a cancellation as well, right? So at the moment, what happens is you say something, the mob disagree with you. You are a heretic. So they try and take your livelihood away. They try and shame you publicly. I think what's going to happen now is they're going to lock you up. I think we've seen that over the weekend, the idea that Nigel, big figures, Nigel Farage is saying this, uh, Lawrence Fox is saying this, Tommy Robinson is saying this, it's incitement. No, it's not. They're just expressing their opinions. They've got nothing to do with what's going on, I would say. Okay. But people are saying it's incitement, that word, and they should be locked up. I think that's where it's going. And I think it's incredibly frightening. Mm. This is with regards to the riots taking place across the UK at the moment. Um, and I found myself getting quite angry watching Sky News yesterday, and I was just amazed at the one-sidedness of it. And this constant, uh, oh, Tommy Robinson, it was really interesting to see, it was as a, as a study, just to go, okay, what's going on here? And it was that Tommy Robinson was, was spreading misinformation because he said that there was a guy covered in blood everywhere, that he was stabbed by by protesting Muslims. And this was an example of misinformation and Elon Musk is terrible for defending him uh, because the truth was this person who was beaten to within an inch of his life uh, had been beaten by blunt objects and not stabbed. Mm -hmm. And Sky News didn't point that out at all. It was just Tommy Robinson. The, the, you'd walk away from that if that was all you knew with the impression mm -hmm. that Tommy Robinson made up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, why is this agenda coming from the likes of mainstream channels like Sky News? I think it's because it's something they bought into all their lives. And if you completely believe in something to the extent that it defines your identity, I don't think this is just about a set of beliefs or a set of convictions. This is who I am. Okay. So these people are absolutely bound up in an identity because the left, um, very much identity politics is about what it says. It's about identity. It's not just ideas. It's about who they are. If you admit that you're wrong in terms of policy, okay, you're wrong in terms of ideas, we shouldn't have done that. The whole house of cards comes down. Your whole being, your whole self comes into question. And I think that's what we've seen over the last 30 years. I think post Blair, we, we've fallen into this identitarian religion, I would call it. Okay. I think identity politics has, is akin to a religion and it's very difficult for the reasons I've just said to turn your back on everything you've ever believed, but also socially it's incredibly dif mm. uh, difficult as well. You know, if we're going out to dinner or, or, you know, we've, we've, we've got friends in common. And then all of a sudden I say to you, well, Andrew, 
you know, I, th I think I think mass immigration is 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 a real danger. Um, I think trans women are men. Then, what happens when all of these things that hold you together as a group of people it suddenly falls apart? So, I, I, it's very difficult to walk away from something that everybody thinks. I think some people might think it's hyperbole that we're going to start getting locked up for these things. But I have seen videos. There was sort of an old man uh, who got the police. Did you see that one? The police came knocking on his yeah. door about, mm. uh, and, and I don't know how vicious the, the hateful things they were saying was, but I do wonder if there's anything. I know that in Germany, for example, they, they, you can't deny the Holocaust. You, you go to prison. I'm not sure I like that that law as much as I even even more I dislike people who deny the Holocaust mm, but mm, where, where do you stand on that and, and do you really see that happening more and more that, that you know hate speech or whatever that means is going to get us locked up I think all we have to do is look to recent history okay we've moved from pronouns to male racists in female prisons in nothing flat if I would have said to you in 2014, Andrew, we're going to have male rights in female prisons with, with blonde wigs and, and pink leggings, you'd, you'd say I was stupid. I don't think the conceptual leap between cancellation, losing your livelihood, and cancellation going into the pokey for six months for, for, for saying wrong things... I don't think that's a, as big a leap. I, I think I think it will happen. Um, I'd like to be wrong. I'd like to come back in two years' time and you say, "Well, you were wrong about that, weren't you?" And, and that'd be brilliant, you know. But I'm worried. Um, I'm worried that um, not only that's going to happen. I think there's going to be a retrospective thing as well. That's the other thing, you know. And people are already talking about this. Oh, you you said this on Twitter, or, or you, you people like us, you said this on on television two or, two or three years ago. Can we talk about it? Because you broke the law, um, this law that was the created two years after you said it. Again, I don't think that's a huge conceptual leap either. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I'm worried about it.